in my veins. I've been driving this train. Years in this lane. Right, guys, we're back down here at Golf Swing Systems with Alex, and today we're going to look at the brand new for 2023 Skytrack Plus. Are we? Yeah. yeah. So it's a serious piece of kit. It's uh, it's taken the Skytrack, which obviously you're very familiar with. Everybody on the channel is going to be familiar with. It was you know, the best-selling launch monitor for donkey's years. And they've taken that unit and basically strapped a bunch of new tech to it that we'll take you through today. Gives you a lot more data, takes away some of the pain points that you might have had, you know, the delay, it's a lot less now. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's a really cool piece of kit that we'll be able to have a look at. Brilliant, I've, I've been waiting to do this video for ages. Um, so yeah, let's, get, let's crack on and yeah, I can't wait to get fantastic. started. This is the first time that I've held one of these brand new units and my first impressions are obviously it's a lot shorter, it's not as tall as the original Skytrack but I think it's a bit wider is it? Yeah it's a bit wider so it's actually got a, it's got a wider field of view um, and that's why so they basically strapped on a Doppler radar onto a Skytrack so it can now watch your golf club as well as the golf ball as you come in so you get that club path data. And to do that, it needs that sort of wider, wider view. It needs the space for the Doppler radar, and it also needs the space for the processing power that just yeah. sort of shortens up that delay time. It's um, it's probably about the same weight, I'd say, as the original Sky. Yeah, maybe a little take. bit heavier. Give or take, um, like yeah, a few grams in it, not much. Uh, I actually love the design of the new Skytrack. Obviously, this one's white and the old one was black and the, the old one was fine. But honestly, when I first saw the colour and the shape of this one, I really quite liked it. So another thing that I noticed is when you turn the Skytrack unit on using the button at the back, then all of the lights are on the top of the unit this time, whereas on the original Skytrack, they were down the side. So another cool feature, I quite like that. It's easier to see when the unit is ready for you to hit your ball. Yeah, and you can see actually on top as well, this little tick here. It's obviously red right now because it's not connected to the computer yet, but if you know the little uh, telltale Skytrack thing where you hover the club a little bit too much and the dot turns off? Yeah, yeah. The tick now changes colour and it will change back to green when it's ready to watch the uh, watch the shot. Ah, so it's a little right, bit, okay. I, I find a lot with giving debt people demos, they'll waggle the club, it'll disappear, they'll hit the shot. That what, what happened? That was frustrating, It's yeah. a little bit easier now to tell that that Skytrack was not ready to look at your shot. Okay, so I'm about to hit my first shot with the brand new Skytrack Plus. Um, we can see we've still got the laser dot that the original Skytrack had. Um, so we'll go into a little bit more detail about that in a moment, but this is a big moment. Let's just try not to shank it into the <laughs> sky track because we don't have the protective case on. That was well right. <laughs> First swing of the day. <laughs> <laughs> that was open, that's after the open festivities. I think he's still he's still working out the creeks the creeks from the open. I've had to buy some <laughs> new golf shoes because of that Sunday. That was a bit better. Skytrack with the original Skytrack, um, there was quite a small hitting area around the laser dot. Um, and sometimes, well, usually to get the Skytrack to read your shot, if you're hitting wedges, you used to have to put the ball a little bit in front of the dot. Uh, if you were hitting longer irons or driver, you would have to put the ball a little bit behind your dot. Um, same with putting and stuff. Um, so I'm going to have a bash at that. So I'm just going to, if I take a couple of, a wedge, couple of wedge shots, I'll yep. and see how we get on. Now, one, one of the things to bear in mind is this is where Skytrack have made a bit of an improvement. So they've taken what used to be a very, very narrow focus point and they've actually widened it out a little bit. So that dot is the center now of about a two inch circle. So you've got about an inch either side of the, of the dot. Okay. Um, now anecdotally, like I, I, this hasn't been tested by Skytrack and we haven't done some proper testing, but in my own testing, the wedge issue is now a non-issue. Like I, I, I think I agree with, with you, Mitch, when, when you were hitting flop shots and, and lob wedges, especially with the original Skytrack, you'd have to kind of play around with it a little bit. Nowadays, that's not an issue at all. Okay, so, yeah, cool. give, give it a go, see so how I'm you feel. Gonna, I'm gonna hit um, a couple of wedge shots, and usually with my wedges, I would have to put the ball about an inch in front of that red dot. So I'm gonna hit some wedge shots from right um, on, top, yeah. on top of the dot. I might even try some behind the dot. So I've got a sand wedge here at the moment, on the dot. That's fine. Straight away, picked it up, no problem. Let's give it one more go. 
See if we can test it. Bring it, bring it, bring it towards you inside the dot as well. Go behind and inside the dot. Really, check, really test it out. Okay, so the ball is closer to me now. Not on the dot. It's a good sign. The dot turned off. Oh, there you go. winning. Right. Yeah, Let's so test it. So Sorry. they're claiming that uh, that hitting zone is actually forty percent bigger than the original square yeah. track. Um, I, I think they're being a bit timid with that number. <laughs> I, I, having used the old Skytrack, you had to be pretty, like, pretty spot on, didn't you? Yeah, you did, yeah. You, you do get a fair bit of leeway here. Um, like you were a good inch inside that, that Absolutely, dot. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, obviously you can try and push the boundaries if you want and see where it gets to, but I think it will drop off a little bit after. So, yeah, you, I'm going to push yeah. the boundaries now. I'm going to put the ball behind the dot where you usually have to hit the longer clubs with the original Skytrack. Let's see if this picks it up. Sign. Oh my days, yeah. unbelievable. There's no chance that the original Skytrack was picking up the ball if it was that far behind the dot. That's amazing, that's miles better. What we tend to find as well, having tested so many different launch monitors, is uh, ones that give you club data, so ones that have that radar, um, they're generally gonna have a little bit of a better chance of picking up sort of stray shots, so where, okay. you, where you've strayed away from where they want you to hit it. Um, and again, this is another anecdotal sort of bit of evidence, but I think it's because they're tracking the golf club as well as the ball. So it's because of the, the new radar system that's within yeah. the Skytrack, yeah. is that correct? So yeah. it's picking up the golf club as well as the golf ball. And Brilliant. As you're probably looking on screen, you're probably thinking this is a bit underwhelming. It's probably very, very similar to the original Skytrack. It's the same, yeah. If I just nip off screen quickly and just press a button, Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so you can, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes here with Skytrack now. So we've actually got this set on pitching wedge. I didn't realize he had a sandwich in his hand. Um, if you want to just whack a pitching wedge away, That's I can it. walk us through some of this data and you'll get an idea of what the new, what the new Skytrack Plus is all about. So this is the new shot optimizer, isn't it? Uh, kind of. This is this. That's uh, that's sort of where you've got the uh, red, amber, red. Um, that's okay. sort of that's working off of the shot optimizer. This is actually just the raw data that you get. Ah, yeah. Right, so the okay. shot optimizer is an even further development. So yeah. So on the original, just go back to that original view for me, Al, that we had initially. So so this was the data. This was like the extent of the data that you get with the original Skytrack, but that stuff that you just pulled up. Yeah. Um, that is the extra data that you get. Yeah, that's kind of the development. Because when you look at this, it does look quite similar. It, it's oh, quite yeah. sort of familiar. But when you un unle like sort of unleash the Skytrack Plus and let it do what it can do, so you just have to, the only thing you have to do to unleash that is sort of actually pick a club. You have to tell it what it's looking at. Yeah. Um, and then it's going to give you the optimized numbers for that club okay. from your swing. Sweet. Like clear off all them stray shots that I've just hit for me, <laughs> and then get that extra data tile up, please. All right, uh, extra data. There we go, go. right. See if I can keep them all green. So yeah, pitching wedge in hand. A little bit straighter, I like that. There you go, you've come to play now. <laughs> the best strike. Still oh, right though. Strike. So you can see you've got these uh, these parameters here, these you know green. Red and amber, you've been very, very helpful and you've got one of each. Uh, <laughs> now those are basically parameters that have optimal ranges. So if you're a club fitter, for example, you know that between 22 degrees and 26 degree launch angle for a pitching wedge is ideal. So you're at the sort of the top end of that. And then the spin and the descent angle, those are other numbers that you know with a pitching wedge to get an optimal pitching wedge flight, you're gonna see those numbers sort of stay yeah. within there. So you've actually spun that up to 9,100 that's technically a little bit too much spin. Okay. So you might be seeing, yeah, if say, you're, say you're going at a flag at the front of a green and you're pitching it at the flag, you might see that rip off the front of the green. Okay, okay. Um, and so, then, yeah, descent angle comes into that as well. If it's coming in flat enough, it's gonna rip back. Yeah, just for anyone that's unfamiliar with the Skytrack and what we're talking about, we're just talking about these, the, the green, red, and amber tiles there. So basically, from the old Skytrack, you had the shot optimizer as well, and they had the same sort of thing. Um, Basically, all they're doing, they're, they're taking some, I'm assuming they're like average data from yeah. Tor yeah. or Skytrack or something like that. And um, for each club, it's giving you an idea of where your data parameters should be for launch angle, backspin, and descent angle. Yeah, exactly. It's taking the numbers from club manufacturers mainly, actually. Okay. Sort of, so right. the optimal performance for your pitching wedge, effectively. Yeah. I'm going to stop hitting that horrible push to the right because we're playing golf tomorrow, aren't we? I need we are playing golf tomorrow. <laughs> Oh. There you go, dead straight. I'm going to beat him tomorrow now. <laughs> yeah, you may well do. <laughs> <laughs> now, what we can do with the Skytrack Plus is actually work out why that happened. 
Okay. okay. So with the club data that you get, so if you look in the bottom right here, we've got club path, face to path, and face to target. Now those numbers are, you know, with the SkyTrack, the SkyTrack original, you didn't get those. No, no. They're no. brand new. And that is actually telling you what you did to affect the golf ball. So it's actually really important. Um, we always say when we're doing demos, people ask what's the most important thing to look at to improve my game. And it's looking at what you're doing with the club and what you're doing with the club face. Because if you don't have control of those, then that, that golf shot could have been yeah, a fluke. Yeah. So you've actually hit a dead straight shot there. So you've got 0.6 of a degree club path coming inside the ball. So, so a tiny just, just hint of a draw. That, yeah. So I can see these arrows. Okay, so we're talking about yeah. the club path, face path, face target. You've got a little arrow pointing right here yeah. and a little arrow pointing left there. Can you just explain which yeah. one is which? So going, going to the right is an into out club path. So uh, you're hitting there. That's all like basically what you consider a draw swing. Yeah, so, so if you're coming into out, you're tending to put right to left spin on the ball. Uh, your face to path. So you've slightly, you see the way you've slightly drawn it past center. Yes, yeah. So that is, if you take the relationship between your face angle and your path, you've slightly gone beyond neutral. So you've actually, your, your face to target is 0.3 closed. That means the ball is drawn past okay. the target and gone slightly further left than maybe you, if you could, if you could put that as an ideal draw shot, you'd land on the line. Yeah, yeah, you'd, yeah you'd finish yeah. up dead on the line, 0.0. 0. 0. 0. Yeah. That's a bit of a, a bit of a folk sort of dream. You're not going to get it very often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so you've hit a fantastic goal shot there, um, because you've got the club path going right, the club face going left, and that's then going to neutral out cool. to the middle. So, so that to so somebody like me who plays off eleven, uh, weekend golfer, that's complicated. Okay, but I imagine like the more that I played around and practiced using this sort of data on the sky track. Um, I would be able to figure out how to, well, what kind of data I need to be getting to get it straight, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, this is probably designed for more like teaching pros, I guess. Um, kind of, but also once you get once you get a simulator in your life that actually does this, you very quickly start to understand. So, we well, this is what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah so yeah. sort of, you know, 18 handicappers, 24 handicappers, those kind of like the, the regular everyday golfer. Um, it's going to unlock a bit more data about your swing and start to make it much easier That's to improve. It. Because you're not then just sort of blasting shots away on a range, which can become the danger of having a simulator. Yeah. You're actually hitting shots where you understand what you did and you can then improve it. So with the original SkyTrack that I own, um, you don't get all this data, you get your ball speed, you get your backspin numbers and stuff like that, but you don't get to actually understand why your shots are going in those particular directions. And like you've just said, um, once, you can, once you've practiced and played around with this, it will become easier for you to understand why your shots are doing that. So then you can start working on different things within your golf game. Yeah, and one of the things that you have with SkyTrack as a sort of, in the back of your mind, you've got the knowledge that what they're giving you is very accurate. That's always been what SkyTrack has sort of held as their most important factor. Yeah. And that's why they only gave the data they gave in SkyTrack original, because it's the only data they could guarantee was accurate. Yeah, okay. So you could feasibly, with the data they gave you, they could have used an algorithm and worked out what your club path did and what your face to, uh, face to path and face yeah, to target yeah, did yeah. without measuring it. But they decided, no, we don't want to do that. We want to give you data that we've measured so you know it's accurate. That's it. So that's why they're now giving it to you because they've got something to measure it with the Doppler radar. Yeah, yeah. So the only, I think it was like club speed with the original SkyTrack that was calculated as a calculated yeah. parameter. There might have been one or two others, I'm not sure. But now that they've got this radar within the SkyTrack Plus, then I'm presuming that that accurately measures yeah. uh, more data parameters. Yeah, so it's, it's going to accurate. Yeah, like you say, exactly. It's accurately measuring them, not working them out. Yeah, yeah. So also, I think as well, so club speed, with it tracking your club, that number can now become a lot more accurate as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's no longer that kind of, that, that in your own head, uh, it's about right you know this is right. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's actually the kind of data that you're going to expect from more expensive launch monitors. And uh, it, is, it is market leading for its class. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's right up there with the other guys in this kind of, this kind of price range, Mevo Plus, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. They're now vying right, right back and forth for sort of who's more accurate. That's, that's right, yeah. yeah. So a lot of the questions that I get asked about the original SkyTrack is, do I trust the data? Um, and one thing that I have to say is, well, the, the way that I always answer that question is, when I first got my SkyTrack and I was, I was hitting maybe 500 balls a day in COVID when I had nothing else to do. Um, <laughs> I pity your elbows. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing because when I eventually did get back out on the course, um, 
my shots on the course were very much reflecting the way that I've been practicing on the sky track. Uh, the biggest one was like my carry distances, so my wedges, I felt like they were much more dialed in compared to before I owned the sky track. Yeah. So I definitely would recommend um, the sky track just in terms of its accuracy and how good it is. Yeah, and I've also seen some of your content as well where you've done tests between the sky track and real life out yes. on range. And it's always been one of its strengths is the shot shaping is that's always it, very, very it. accurate. So if you're hitting a hook, it's going to show you. It's going to tell you. <laughs> Which well, is, uh, it's, 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 not always, out, yeah, right. it's not always great. It's not great for the ego. Um, but you know what you're seeing on the screen is actually accurate, which is going to inform your actual practice. Brilliant. So I, I hate it when you sort of see some, some launch monitors, especially older ones, you'll see, oh, maybe you hit a, a pull hook and you know it off the club when you hit a really bad shot. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of lets you get away with it. Yeah. That's a real gripe of mine. I, I sort of see that and I'm like, ah, oh, it's, yeah, it's not right, yeah. you know? So the, this is going to tell you. For, for sure that this is accurate, this is sh what you did. So you hit that shot dead straight and mm -hmm. it would have gone dead straight in real life. I'm just intrigued, Al, about something else that's new on this software that I've, uh, well, I've not only just noticed it, but there's a little picture of my club over there. Yeah. Now that appears to, I'm, I mean, I kind of know what it's about. It's showing you where my club face was at impact. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a really cool little tool because, um, I mean, I'm relatively experienced at playing golf now, so I, c I can tell when my club face was open without using the data. Um, but just to give beginners especially a visual of what their club face is doing at the impact, I feel that's going to be um, a massive benefit for, for this unit. Yeah, and that kind of visualization as well was something that was usually, it was kind of, uh, it was restricted to more expensive launch monitors. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, that kind of visualization, it's really useful for coaches as well. Because if you start to hit a, you know, a push draw, and you'll maybe not bring it back to center as, mu as much as you need to, you'll immediately see it there. It's going to tell you so, why. Yeah. And it tells you the face to target and the club path yeah, uh, just under there as well. Exactly. So, I mean, you can have all the data tiles that you want. There's, as far as I'm concerned, you can have all the data tiles as you want, but those numbers don't really mean a lot to me because I'm not a golf pro and I'm not a really low handicapper. Um, but just to have that visual image of my club face makes it a lot easier to understand. Great shot. Sky Track's tracked it absolutely fine. One of the main issues with the original Sky Track was the delay from when you hit your shot to when the ball actually registers on the software. Now, the new Sky Track Plus claims to be a lot faster. So let's put it to the test. That was a bit heavy. Okay, that's my five hit with the Skytrack Plus. Let's hook up the Skytrack Original and see if there's any difference. So yeah, I kind of got used to just chucking it down with the Skytrack Plus, but you have to be a bit more specific where you put it, don't you, on this one? Yeah, I'd say there's a little bit of a longer delay there. It felt a bit like it anyway. Oh, we've got no read. Didn't get any of them with the Sky Track Plus. Okay, on my first impressions of hitting five shots with the Sky Track Plus and the Sky Track Original. I would say that the Skytrack original did feel a little bit slower than the Skytrack Plus. However, um, that shot delay, which is quite a big deal for a lot of Skytrack users, and it puts a lot of people off from buying Skytrack, it is still there with the Skytrack Plus. It might be a little bit faster. We're gonna have to go and check out the results, so let's find out how it actually got on. So as you can see from these results, we've got the Skytrack Plus on the left hand side and the Skytrack Original on the right hand side. Now the Skytrack Plus, the average time that it took to register the shot on the software is a little over two seconds. Whereas the Skytrack Original, the older Skytrack, was a little bit longer at 2.62 seconds. Now looking at these, the difference, yes, the Skytrack Plus is faster than the original Skytrack, but it's not a lot faster. You're still looking at about a two second delay from once you hit that ball to when it registers on the software. 
Now, if you want to see how I did this test in a little more detail, then be sure to watch the full video and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video and it'll also be on the end screen. Another thing that was a bit difficult about the original Skytrack is the alignment and I guess it's the same with most launch monitors. Um, I'm presuming, Al, it's just a case of wherever it's pointing, um, that's, that's your center line. Yeah, so with some launch monitors, you have to kind of put them down and then like manually align them to the screen you're hitting, especially if you're indoors, hitting to the screen, like yeah. telling them where the center of the screen is. Yeah. Uh, now with most cameras, uh, the general way you'd do it, you can go into optimizing programs, but the general way you would do it is, is put it down visually straight to where the straight, uh, where the, where the screen is. is yeah. And then effectively the, the straight line is a line going along the line of the sky track through that dot. Sweet. So I, I struggle with this with the alignment on my original sky track and with the metal case that you get with the original, it's got a little lip and you can pop an alignment stick in there. I don't mm. know if that was like intentional or what. But anyway, I've got some alignment sticks here. So if I just pop that along there, that's definitely going to give me a better visual image of where my center line is now. So let's see if I can hit it straighter. <laughs> He's blaming the alignment people. <laughs> There's a wedge and I'm 19 yards offline. That's <laughs> shocking. There you go. Ah, see. Ah, oh, it was the alignment. It was much better. <laughs> <laughs> Just that visual aid for me definitely works. Yeah. Do you want to take a look at the, uh, at the protective shield? Yeah, let's yeah, get that let's out. So there's a new protective case for the, the new Skytrack, which is interesting. Now you'll, look at that. you'll be happy to see. It's a little bit different to the older one. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, it's plastic, not metal. Mm, okay. Uh, now, some people are a bit dubious about this, but I yeah. do demos for all sorts of golfers from a few days playing golf, and they love it, and they decide they want the simulator to pros, to tour pros. And uh, some of the, the former of those have uh, tested this shield pretty well, <laughs> uh, and it, it will take a golf ball. Uh, hit at quite a lick. So um, let's have a feel of that. Yeah, there's no there's no worries about that sort of uh, durability. That close to the camera. So yeah, this is, it's plastic, obviously. Um, the original one was metal. It just felt yeah. like if a golf ball goes into that original Skytrack protective shield, it just bounces straight off. Yeah. Yeah, I would be if I bought. How much is this? Uh, it's it's right around 100 pounds. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit less. So yeah, if I was spending 100 quid on this and uh, it came in its plastic, I would be a little bit dubious. It's tough, trust me. Okay. And uh, the other thing as well, you'll be happy to see the lip is still there for the alignment stick. That's good, that's um, good. And uh, one of the good things as well about it is you've obviously got these adjustable feet. Yes. Um, so if you're, for example, say you were using a true strike, I know you're using a T-Turf mat now, mm -hmm. um, but if you were using a true strike mat where there's a big lip, yeah. you can adjust these, that's gonna raise your sky track to the correct level. Yeah. Um, it's gonna give you accurate data, um, which is really nice. And you can also, you screw in the sky track to this as well. So you've got okay. no worries about sort of if Very you're similar carrying to the around, original, yeah. yeah. That's good. You've got a little carry handle here. So if you're carrying it to the that's range, cool. you don't have to worry about it dropping yeah, that's out quite or anything handy, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. It's, it's a good piece of kit and it, it does keep it safe. Um, we Tried are, and tested. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's been tested, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> good to know, good to know. I do like your golf clubs. Do you? They're good. They're all right for a package, <laughs> though, aren't they? For a package, they go miles. But, See, uh, that was good, that. I mean... We're not even like properly filming here, but um, <laughs> just might as well do it. Like I was watching from behind the camera then and Alex's ball hit there. And that is exactly where the Skytrack picked it up. Yeah, so, so it should be pretty much. Accuracy yeah. is spot on. Man. It should, uh, yeah, that, that's another thing. That, that Skytrack, you know it's going to be accurate. It's, yeah. They're so good. Another thing that uh, is new and it's kind of working in the background is the shot optimizer. Now they've made quite a big deal out of this for Skytrack. So, so this they, was on the original Skytrack, wasn't it? Was, it was, yeah, it's, it was there in the Skytrack and it's just been a little bit upgraded because ah, you've got okay. that extra data there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're going to understand a little bit more. So if I just quickly whip it onto the page. Go for it. Yeah, so I'm quite got, familiar with this. Yeah, so you've got the there. familiar sort of screen, uh, screen that you're going to see, um, but you've obviously got the optimized, uh, yeah, you've got your optimized sort of ranges so for launch angle, backspin, de uh, descent angle. Then you've also got things like your averages for your club paths. So you're going to get data that is going to show you for your historic session data. So say you hit 37 irons and your average club path is two degrees into out, but then you hit one that you really like that was completely neutral. You know you're actually so, not quite. So you're talking about, so this is obviously my last shot, the big yeah. numbers. It gives you the average for each one. Yeah. Amazing. That's cool. So and what's, the, what's plus minus? Uh, plus minus is the variance. So that's between your, your fastest, say for ball speed, yeah. that's the difference between your fastest and your slowest. Ah, okay. So around, okay. around the middle. So your median might well be 
120 or something, and then the yeah. plus or minus is going to be six, uh, six miles an hour either, either side. side right, yeah. um, that's a bit of an outlier because that's when I hit the end. Um, so oh, yeah, gonna, that was going to throw your data out a little bit. It's going to throw your data out a little bit. But you've got, yeah, it's, it's a really good way of actually understanding the data behind what you're seeing on the tiles. Um, you can also see sort of optimized heights and things like that for your shot. So, yeah. you know, for a seven iron, you want it to be getting up to uh, getting up in the air, but you don't want it to go too high. If you hit it too high, it's going to come down like a pitching wedge. That's you're going right. to get a roll. Same yeah. thing with driver. If you're hitting a driver you know, 50 yards in the air, it's going to come down and just stop, yeah, which is, yeah, is yeah, useless. Yeah. Um, so you've got that. You've also got your obviously your shot shape on the right hand side. And then there's another way you can look at this data. And this is probably a bit more relevant to if you're working with a coach. But you oh, can get your yeah. numeric side of things. Again, this was also available on the original it SkyTrack. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a lot of these things are just adaptions of the program to help bring in SkyTrack Plus. So you've obviously got your path numbers on the left. You've got all the optimal averages and carries and things like that. It's it's just a really nice way of looking at it and, and just sort of see if you if you whack a shot away. It's just a lot more busy than the, than busy, the original SkyTrack because there's more data yeah. available. I'd say it's probably for the more analytic golfer. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So you get, you do, we tend to get two types of golfer that comes in here. Uh, we get guys that just want to see the shot shape, which is great for the other screen. Um, and we get guys who want to really, sort of the nerdier, want to delve into the data. I'm actually one like this. I like to delve <laughs> yeah, into the data. So. <laughs> data. And you're going to see this here. I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll see all that That's data. You can actually golfer. understand your shot, you know? So you hit your shot, get all your new data, you can see it all populating. You can see it working in the background at the same time as you can sort of see behind there, you can see the shot shape happening. Yeah, you can yeah. see all this data happening in the background. So you can work out how this SkyTrack is working and sort of understand your launch monitor a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. cool. I really like it. I think it's a really cool way of looking at your data. Yeah, so one thing that I wanted to mention is like, I play a lot of simulated golf, mm. GS Pro, TGC 2019 and that. Um, it's important to note that for, for simulated golf, if you're interested in just playing simulated golf, you don't need all of this data. No. Um, this is more for people who are interested in practicing, getting a launch on it so they can practice, become a better golfer, analyze their swing more like you were yeah. saying, look at all the stats, the data, the numbers and all that sort of stuff. So if, if you just want to play simulator golf and you're not bothered about all of this stuff, the original SkyTrack is probably just as good. Yeah, it's going to be the way good, yeah. to go. But if you're interested in developing your game, learning about your swing and how to improve it, then the SkyTrack Plus is going to be the, definitely the one for you. Okay, Al, so I don't think anything much has changed, but uh, can you just tell me about the game improvement package for SkyTrack, please? Yeah, so the game improvement package is basically the license that gives you full access to the SkyTrack program um, and then also access to simulator golf. So uh, with the, the game improvement, you're getting access to things like the uh, whole game improvement section of the SkyTrack app, which includes things like uh, the skills assessment, which I know you play a lot of, uh, the bag mapping and the uh, wedge matrix as well. And how much is the game improvement package? That comes in right around 100 pounds, like, so uh, 129 pounds. I yeah, so, so it's actually yeah. gone up. I actually renewed my game improvement package just the other day. Uh, and it used to be £99, uh, yeah. but now it's £129. Yeah, for... you can see I'm not quite used to that. I said yeah. right around £100, but then my brain kicked in. <laughs> That's it, yeah. So I, I thought it might have been just £129 just for the new SkyTrack Plus, but it's also £129 for the, the original SkyTrack yeah. as well. But I must admit um, that I absolutely love the game improvement package that you get with SkyTrack. Before I got Sim Golf, uh, I used to use the game improvement package all the time, skills assessment, wedge matrix, and honestly, it was fantastic for yeah. literally improving your game. And then you've also got the, uh, the play and improve package. Um, so this is kind of the next step up on the SkyTrack license ladder. Which has changed a little bit. It has changed, it's, it's got better. Yeah. Um, so they're now offering, um, they used to offer access to WGT, um, which is, I know well, you're not much so of a fan of it. Uh, not a big fan, no. I've got a bit of a soft spot because I used to play on the laptop when I was a kid. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you now get access to E6, which is a proper course simulator um, on iOS and PC, yeah. uh, which is really cool. Which is miles better. Yeah. And you get 15 golf courses with that. Okay, um, Including some good ones like Belfry. You know, it's got a few really good golf courses on there. Um, and yeah, it's a really good option if you want to be playing uh, golf simulator sort of courses um, with an option of actually doing it without the PC, because you've also got access to the iOS app um, of E6, okay. which is a great, it's a great sort of, iPad version of the golf simulator. The graphics aren't going to be as good as if you're using a computer. Yeah. But it is a good way to get onto that simulator ladder for a bit of a budget. You know? So with the play and improve package now for SkyTrack, you get, like we just said, 
access to E6 Connect. Is that E6 Connect only on iPad or can you use it on no, desktop on as well? Both. Yes, on yeah, both. so, there, so the, the plan improve is effectively SkyTrack sell it as access to simulator courses for iOS and PC. Which I feel is a miles better deal because with the old version of the plane improved package, it was access to World Golf Tour, which like is we spoke only, about yeah. is not cool, it's iOS only. Now with E6 Connect, you can play proper golf simulator software um, on desktop and iOS. Mm. I feel like SkyTrack have done this to compete with the likes of the Flightscope Mevo Plus yeah. and even the Garmin R10 because with the Mevo Plus, um, you get access to E6 Connect and it was kind of just, a miles better option really uh, compared to the original SkyTrack so yeah yeah with with simulator golf coming on so much as well like it's getting more accurate it's getting more accessible you know it's and it's also becoming more mainstream um, yeah, yeah, if yeah. they didn't improve that kind of that license offering that they had you know, maybe up, you would, maybe you would say the SkyTrack Plus would be getting left behind but with that E6 Connect offer yeah I love it's that. fantastic and it obviously still works with uh, TGC 2019 as well all ah, right so you can um, play both E6 yeah, and, and I know TGC. you play on GS Pro as well yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've got access to all these different um, course simulators now that is a real option with the SkyTrack Plus it does make it a real competitor to things yeah, like Mevo yeah. Plus yeah okay guys so we are now outside with the SkyTrack Plus and uh Think it's going to work right, Al? Yeah, I'm. I'm really confident. To be honest, um, so the reason I'm confident, the SkyTrack original was wasn't really an option outside, was it? It's, you could if it wasn't too bright. Um, yeah, that's yeah. a good point, Al, because I've had a lot of questions about that, and I used to use my SkyTrack outside mm. when it was a bright sunny day before I had an indoor simulator setup, yeah. and I always found that it was all right. You're okay. Yeah, but a lot of people, I believe, you struggle, struggle with, with it outdoors. Yeah. So yeah, so the SkyTrack Plus is supposed to be much better outside. Yeah, because it's got that larger hitting zone. Yeah. You don't have to be as precise on the uh, the, the dot. The, the SkyTrack original would always have been accurate outside. Yeah. It's more to do with the ease of use. Right, So okay. you, you should be able to find, we're going to get Mitch to hit a few. You should find it pretty easy to sort of find that dot. Just hit it, put it, you get an idea of where it is roughly. You start just whacking the ball yeah, down like you were yeah. in the simulator and smacking them away. Okay, then. see, how, we see go. how they get on. So you're hitting a seven ice, that's what, about 170 ish? Yeah, well, 165, 170 ish, something like that. Let's go. That was nice. That's a great swing. Nice solid read, little push draw. Absolutely. It's Beautiful. Exactly Coming like back real to life center. Is that. There you go, 173, big one. Fantastic. Came out hot. Spot on that, spot yeah. on. Right, let's have another. 120 ball speed there. That's impressive. Is that good? Very good, yeah. That's no idea. Very good. <laughs> okay, so he's throwing it down near the dot. Okay. It's decent okay. again, a nice Bit little of a draw. Ball draw, maybe. Yeah, lovely. Just just drawing past centre. Yeah. Super accurate in yeah. terms of like the real, real, real You're really life getting hold of these. Life. These are coming out hot. Fully warmed up now, mate. 177 carry. That's massive. <laughs> what, uh, one of the things that I like to get people to do when they're trying out launch monitor, obviously you're the trying out the, the SkyTrack Plus for the first time today. Try hitting a bad one. Okay, yeah. one of the good tests of a launch monitor is how it shows off yeah, what a bad, bad shot That's is. a very good point. That, so hit, yeah. hit, hit a you know, low draw or, or a low pull or a yeah. scruffy swing. Again. Right, okay, scruffy swing. Let's see what happens. <laughs> right down the middle. Bulleted. That's bulleted. That is ridiculous. That went right down the right middle. Right down the middle. <laughs> Right, come on. See if you hit one really low, just sort of like, like almost top it. Right, okay. I'll try. There you go. <laughs> That's actually a lovely shot. Yeah. It's just drawing past centre. That's Again, nice. picking it up nicely. That's coming up. Right, go on, you come and hit a bad one. I, I obviously I'll, hit can't a real hit bad bad I'll hit a real bad one. I'm You're that in... good, I can't hit a bad shot. Okay, this is going to, it should <laughs> slice on the Skytrack. It should slice. Oh, wow, yeah. There you go. <laughs> that was massive. There you go. Nicely picked up. Nicely picked up. Shot shapes just like real life. Um, what I really want to test, Alex, is what a lot of people wonder about is, and I know Skytrack say it's not going to be great off real grass, but I want to try it off real grass. Let's give it a go. Let's see what it's like. Let's so give it a go. Try and find a relatively... Let's try and find something as flat as possible, really, isn't it? You can actually spot the laser quite easily. I'm quite impressed, actually. Can you? Right, so we've got the SkyTrack obviously on the grass. Um, Alex has just spotted where the laser is, but I guess one benefit of this new SkyTrack is it doesn't have to be bang on the laser, no, does once it? No, once you've got it once and you've kind of got an idea, you've got that kind of tolerance of about an inch around the ball. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, one of the one of the sort of limitations of any camera 
is you're going to have to eventually move the camera because you'll be making a divot line. Yeah. Um, but once you get the idea, you've then got a few swings where you're going to be able to hit from exactly the same spot. And uh, yeah, I'm intrigued to see how this goes because obviously Skytrack says it's, it's not ideal, yeah. but I'm pretty confident it's going to be good. See, I must admit, I have tried it with the original Skytrack on the grass. And like you say, once you've hit a shot, you can have to move the camera uh, because it's not going to pick up. Yeah. Well, you don't want to hit, hit out of the divot, basically. Yeah. It's more ideal off the range map, but we'll give it a go. That's we'll it. see, we'll see what happens. A little bit of fun. So this first ball is just down where you placed it, Al. Let's yep. get it lined up. Great shot. Skytrack's tracked it absolutely fine. Just right of centre. That's the one. Let's hit another. Right, so let's find out where this laser is. It's ready. Okay. There you go. You can see it there. So there we go. Yeah, so you've, used, you've used your foot. I tend to use the club face. Oh dear, yeah. yeah. The foot's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I don't actually know where the laser dot is here, but I've just put it down in the general area. See what happens this time. If it picks it up. Oh, that was oh, well big fat. chunky one. <laughs> That'll be yeah, me it's tomorrow. Yeah, it's going fine. What kind of carry distance are we saying there? Uh, about 90 something yards. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, one more time. Again, you see why it's not ideal off the off the grass because you're hitting your divots and I guess with a with a radar launch monitor you can just slightly move You've it to the side. You've got a bit more divots. tolerance, yeah, so Absolutely. you can move sort of further back and further forwards and So, right, let's try and finish on a good one. Better. Oh, so pure. Lovely swing. Good. Carry distance on that. Uh, about 170. You millered that. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, 174 total. Uh, okay. So, yeah, obviously, camera based launch monitor is not going to be ideal for no. directly off. Well, I guess. I don't know. What's the GC3 like if you're doing it outdoors? So, the GC3, obviously, it's got a wider, um, it's got a wider sort of field of view. That's so, it. with the GC3, you've got about. I don't know the exact amount, but it's about 16 so, inches. Yeah, so if you've yeah, got your, if you're foot. making a divot line hitting off real turf, then you can just move it inside the divot line. Yeah, yeah exactly. So GC3 still Same gonna thing's going to apply to a radar because you've got the tolerance either side of centre. That's it, so yeah. So you can form divot lines in a row. Um, obviously, it's, just, it's one limitation of Skytrack. It's not going to be ideal because the field of view is so narrow. Yeah, so what, what did you say the tolerance is either side of the dart? About six uh, inches either side? No, not, not quite that much. Not it's that about much. It's about an inch... It's about a ball right, yeah. either side of the dot, so you've got about a two inch diameter ball, uh, like sort of circle. Yeah, so that's the limitation of the Skytrack outdoors in comparison to something like the GC3, which is another camera based launch monitor, but obviously you pay a lot more for a GC3. Yeah, you're you? paying over double. So, yeah, but like I say, I am impressed with the outdoor, with hitting outdoors, but it's just going to be, it's not going to be feasible yeah. when moving the, moving the launch yeah, monitor. It'd be outdoors, the time, is it? outdoors off a range map. Absolutely. Would be, would be doable. Right, I've got to say, um, I'm actually really impressed with the Skytrack Plus. Good. I wasn't <laughs> sure how good it was going to be in terms yeah. of like the upgrade from the original Skytrack. But yeah, honestly, my first impressions of this unit are absolutely amazing, good. especially if you want to get better at golf. Um, and there's a way that you guys can save money, isn't yeah. there, Alex? Yeah, so the, uh, this unit's now coming in at £3,095. Um, so obviously a bit of a bit of an increase on the old Skytrack, but there is a lot more features. That's right. Um, so it's coming at £3,095. And uh, if you use your discount code, so Handicap5, you just pop that in at your checkout point. So there's, it sort of says, have you got a coupon? Pop in the coupon, Handicap5, uh, it'll knock 5% off. So that'll bring it down to 2,940 quid and some oh, change. Unbelievable. So it's a good it's a good size, about 150 quid saving, um, which obviously... It's still expensive, but every little helps. It's going to be uh, the cheapest place that you can get a new Skytrack Plus. So like Alex said, use the discount code HANDICAP5 at the checkout on the Golf Swing Systems website. Yeah. You're going to save yourself around about 100, 150 quid. Yeah. So. And you get free next day delivery too. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs>